Temperature of ammonia, again, um, at 857, 857. Kilopascals with an enthalpy of 15, 1650. Okay, so now the game changes a bit, right? Because we need to look at the property tables for ammonia and we need to find out what is going on with the enthalpy so that we can approximate it to what we're looking for. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the ammonia table. 857, so that's going to be 8.57 bar. Okay, 8.57 bar. Ammonia. 8.57 bar. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. And... I want to look at this column here to be able to compare it to the value that I have. Okay, so I know that on D we are at an enthalpy of, or a specific enthalpy, I shouldn't say, specific enthalpy of 16. What was it? 16. Check. 1650. The enthalpy at the saturated state is 1597. So because, once again, because our enthalpy, our actual enthalpy, put actual here, actual enthalpy, is greater than the enthalpy of saturated state, we are superheated. Now, the question is, we're superheated by how much, right? Because we know it's superheated, but to be able to grab the properties we're looking for, we need to know the, the, the difference by how much we're superheated to be able to do the same math we did before, right? That's the idea. So then, how do we go about this? Well, we're going to have to do a little property analysis. Okay, so at Tsat, I don't even know what Tsat is, at 20, at 20, we are at 15, 97, Point two enthalpy. Our value we're looking for is sixteen fifty. So we need one more data point to be able to do this. That's a whole idea. And to do that, we can choose to go. Oh, never mind. We're looking at the superheated one. Oh, never mind. 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 The enthalpy is here. And I have 2, 7, 5, and 14, 62. So, okay, so still, still, okay, we are still above what we, so the analysis is still valid, right? So my actual is still greater than T sat. I just had the the um, enthalpy value wrong and correct. Okay, but if, if I want to find out what, by how much I'm over so that I can find out, I don't even know what we're looking for anymore. Oh, the temperature. Okay, so it's actually the temperature, right? So I want to find out the temperature, how much I'm over. And I know that at the temperature of 20, I would have this much. I have more than that, so therefore I'm above 20. I'm actually between 1650, so I am... more. It's more than this, right? So 1650, 1650, 1650, here you go, 1650. This is where I am this enthalpy here. So if I'm over here, I'm saying that my T difference between the saturated temperature and the heat is 100 Kelvin. Okay? So let's think about that for a second. T that I'm at minus T sat equals 100. 
Kelvin. T sat we happen to know, right? I think it's 20. Yep, it's 20. So there goes our unknown, right? T minus 20 equals 100 Kelvin. If this is in Celsius, then we ought to put this in Celsius too. Again, it's the same thing for a difference, right? So therefore, the T that I'm at is 120 degrees Celsius. In other words, I'm 100 Celsius above the 20, which is a saturated temperature. So that's my answer for part D. Oops, small mistake here. Please just consider this. The logic is right, but I did a mistake here. Um, back to this. We know that the enthalpy on this state is 1650 ki kilojoules per kilogram. We also know that the delta, the superheated delta T for the enthalpy for the when it's superheated by 50 and when it's superheated by 100. So what we need to do is um, C interpolates to see what's going to be the delta for the um, 1650. So in other words, we can say that when, to put on over here, let's put the delta T, and over here is going to put the enthalpy. Okay, or actually, the other way around, just to make it easier. Delta T and the super critical. Okay, so this logic, the one that we just used, is correct, right? This applies. What is incorrect is that I, I got the 1650 from a different um, row, and I didn't notice that. But what we need to do is, okay, we know the delta T will be equal to the T minus the saturated temperature. We've always known this. We've always known that's 20, right? So the delta T will be the T that we're at minus 20 degrees Celsius. That is correct, and that is still stands, right? And that's what we're going to use to find out the T that we're looking for. But what we're missing is the delta T. Now, we happen to know that for this situation we're in, when the enthalpy is 1597, the, um, sorry, the delta T is 50. And we happen to know that when the delta T is 100, the superheated delta T is 100, the enthalpy is 19, uh, 1719. So what I can say is, okay, when my enthalpy is, where's my, my, and my enthalpy is 15, 97.2, my delta T is 50, and delta T Kelvin or Celsius, right? If it's delta T, they're going to be the same. And then when it's 17.19, uh, 19.3, 19 the delta T is 100 Kelvin. Now, my enthalpy happens to be 16.50, right? And note that that is between these two guys here. So therefore, I expect the delta T to be somewhere in between the 100 and the 50. And to find out, I'm going to do a linear interpolation to find out what is that delta T. When you're using the Rogers tables, and this is important to note, if your number so is out of this interval here, okay, so let's say this was 2000 for the sake of argument. The enthalpy is 2000. You have to use a uh, linear extrapolation, right? So you're going to extrapolate and assume that the linear behavior is going to continue beyond limits you have that starts to get um you start increasing the risk of um of getting a big error on your calculation but if you're a student and you're using the rogers tables and you have to use the rogers tables then you don't have much of a choice okay that's what you have to do so you can interpolate or extrapolate on adult circumstances if you are doing this professionally and you want to do it because you want to find the value for your work then you can get, just get better tables more precise tables okay but back to the problem at hand, um, when I did this interpolation, what I got out of this is 71.62 Kelvin or Celsius. 71.62, and it goes beyond, right? One, two, da, 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 da. Right, but that's going to be Kelvin or Celsius because this is a difference. So now we have that delta T. Now we can go back and take this value that we just found. Let's just approximate to the 71.6. We can take this back to this idea here. Okay, that's going to be or Kelvin or Celsius, Celsius or Kelvin. So therefore, therefore, my real, my correct answer to this part is T will be my delta T plus my 20 Celsius. If we put in Celsius, then uh, that's going to be the 71.6 plus the 20. So therefore, my T is 91.6 degrees Celsius.
Okay? And that is the answer for part D. All right, and last is the enthalpy and the specific volume for steam of a, on a quality of 90%. Steam at a quality of 90%. All right, so the method we're going to follow here is exactly the same, right? We know we are to be using the normal saturated mixture tables because we have a quality, so it's going to be here for sure. We know the temperature, so I need to go to 200 Celsius. And I stop at 100, unfortunately. Two hundred is here. Okay, so I might need to interpolate depending on what we want to get out of it. I want to get super precise information. We're going to interpolate between these two guys here to get the data between one ninety eight and two hundred and one um, to get the specific volume and the enthalpy. All right, so let, there we go again. Same idea, right? What we're going to do if we want the enthalpy and we know the quality is ninety percent. What I'm going to do is, let me just highlight this. Okay, what I'm going to do is, down here, down here, and down here. I'm going to get 90% of this and 10% of this. Okay? Now, once again, if you want to do the whole thing, the, way, the, re the real way of doing it is like this. We're going to get, have to do an interpolation here for this or this and by the way for this because we also going to need to do it for a specific volume on on the one hand we have 198.3 and 201.4 the this is 845 this is 859 this is 2.792, this is 2.794, this is 13.17 and 12.39. All right, so now what we need to do is interpolate the whole thing for 200. So that's why it takes longer it's a longer effort. By the way, we're still missing one thing, right? We're still missing this guy to be able to calculate it. So then what we need to do is go to the other properties of water. Where is it? For other properties of water, this has the nice 200 here. And this has the specific volume I'm looking for. So. At least for this one, I don't need to interpolate. I can go ahead and grab that. It's going to be 0 0.001157 right here, right? Always remember this is 10 to the minus 2. So there's these two zeros here. So then what we do is grab all these properties. All right, there you go. So now with these properties, we can go ahead and say, all right, so if I'm looking for the specific enthalpy of the mixture, all we need to do is give the 90% quality to one side, give the 10% um, quality for the other side. So it's going to be 90% of 27 97.93.1 plus 10% of 852.1 times 57. And for the specific volume, same deal. We're going to have 90% of the vapor, so 90% of the point. 1273 plus 
10% of the liquid, which is 0 0.001157. All right, plug it out in, plug it all in. That's what we get. So that's going to be our answer for the enthalpy, 25.99 kilojoules per kilogram. I don't know the mass, so I can't eliminate that. And 0.1147 for the specific volume. And that does it for the last one. Okay, so the similar to the previous question, and again, I urge you to watch that and understand it pretty well. Um, each of these has a different uh, catch to it, right? The first one, we needed to remember it went to total enthalpy, therefore we needed to multiply it five kilograms that we had. On the second one, it was ammonia, and we had to use a different property table to find it for ammonia, and then we um, had to calculate the, if you recall, the uh, density, right? Calculate the density for the ammonia. Let's put it here. Calculate the density for the ammonia to be able to find the specific volume for the liquid. Then on the Freon one, it was a superheated fluid and we needed to use the um, superheated tables to be able to find out um, what was the enthalpy to grab the properties of the enthalpy on the superheated. Superheated. Then on the next one, it was ammonia again, but this time it gave us the enthalpy. So we needed to work with the enthalpy to find out through the enthalpy that we were actually above the enthalpy of the saturated uh, state and therefore use that property to be able to calculate by how much we were above. So to find the temperature, you need to do the delta T between the saturated temperature to find the um, difference there that we had on uh, the value in the table. And with that, we could find the temperature. And then last but not least, on E, we're looking for a specific volume in the enthalpy uh, at steam at 200. And then we look when we look at the 200 steam, we didn't have exactly what we needed, so we needed to interpolate each of the properties we were after and then multiply just like we did on the first one for the 70% quality, but then obviously accounting for the 90%. So each had their own, you know, tricks and things, hoops we needed to jump through. If you have any questions, as per usual, just leave them down below in the comment section. And if this video was helpful, consider giving it a like. We'll talk soon.